So, did you guys watch AEW Dynamite? No. They're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, it's kind of weird that Jim Ross was not on this show. He broke his hip. He no. Broke- what, he fell? I don't know. Uh, get get better, our friend, uh, a friend of the show right. and a legend. Jim I Ross. knew he was having something done, but that was even, I think it, this hip is a new development. That's har- That's horrible. What was the rating for this show? 828 total. That's all? Wow. I, I honestly thought that this would, that the rating would be higher because th- this is a pattern, too, of like like people, the viewership. If you have like two or three weeks in a row where the ratings are not good, then you usually have a bump back up to like, you know, like like more people watch because they haven't watched a while because like people watch professional wrestling by habit. If you miss a couple weeks, you're kind of like going to watch it to mix. You're never going to really miss like three weeks in a row. I thought this would be up like around 880, like 8, 890, because last week was Valentine's Day, and a lot of people probably didn't watch for Valentine's Day. That they would just pick it back up this week. So yeah, they're in a rut. I mean, they're, but bro, they're they're in a rut because there's nothing really like there's there's not like an A list angle on this sh- on this show. It's like I need to watch it this week because this is like they've got some really good stuff going on with with th- these characters or whoever it may be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gonna feel the same way, Conan? Yeah, and the main event, bro. Again, the run-in always does better than the main event. Right. But um, people, yeah, because people. Are the in. main event was the lowest-rated thing of the night. Yeah, because mm. yeah, because there is one which was which is involved all your people for your main event angle, which is weird. So I'm hoping, open, that, I'm hoping that the the, the pay per view, like after that, we get like something good happens there to push it forward. You know what I mean? I'm hoping there's a good angle on the pay per view or something that you know brings the interest back up the following show uh, you know what's well, going to bring the interest a little bit believe it or not and the smartest thing he did was stay away when mjf comes back because if you don't leave nobody misses you and i people miss him like he does he is missed on the show because it was always interesting or funny yeah always stood out right okay so they start off this is the new way they like to start off because i guess tony thinks that people want to watch good matches so we have to hurry up and get to the first match they open the show pyro and they go right to the ring entrances and right right to the start of the match. It's like if you watch the show, if you didn't watch the show the past two weeks and you turn it on, you're like, all right, well, um, you know, the announcer's trying to explain why these guys are fighting. Did they do a recap here, a video, where showed them uh faces, you know, because basically the only angle here was they got each other's faces after their match last week and they they, they started fighting. So now they're having after the uh, after the match, the singles match we had. I think they did have a recap. Okay. Uh, but basically, there's a long, long match. Uh, Bro, this was in a freaking, forever. Yeah. And in a draw. Right. And they like just I'm, did Swerve and Page in a draw, I think, uh, last week or right. the week before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of draws, but. I'm not, I'm not either. Right? Yeah. Although we can continue now. Now we're not going to get a. We got to do another match. And it's like. Yeah, well, they did that because they, they want to save the final match for Revolution. Or they actually think that maybe. That, that they, these guys just working together in the ring is the draw. And I'm like, well, that's really? definitely Dude, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's what but, they think it is, but it's obviously not, you yeah. know. But how, what did what did that segment do? Did they do did they have that big bang uh lead in or no? Yeah, they did. And it was like eight. It's still kind of like a de- decent it was the highest rated thing was 996. Uh, yeah, the first No, that that's not that's bro, here's here's what happens. Okay? The big bang theory Okay, because I why well, if you watch in real time, the Big Bang, the show actually starts a minute to two minutes after the top of the hour. Right. So if you're watching the Big Bang Theory, a one to two minutes into that that number that that's the Big Bang crowd. Right. Because the, then then the show starts. So well, check it out. Cause, yeah, because it goes way, down considerably right. on the second they're, one they're fud- and they're, the they, third. They, just, they decided to do this by fudging the numbers by starting. The show, yeah, to artificially the helped them. Right, we get right, we get that thing. Okay. And then they so, give them that. Then they give them the right. run over at the end, which always gets a little bit of a bump. Right. Yeah. Well, here's what the to... Big Bang Theory does. I got your I got your ratings here for the Big Bang Theory. In the last, uh, well, they don't have up to date, but for the first week of February, okay, one point three million, one point two million, one point one million, seven hundred fifty one thousand, eight hundred thirty three thousand. So it's a strong lead in, you know. Yeah. Big time. Well, it's a strong lead in because their show is, it does more than this show, which is right. crazy that, that you're not doing better numbers than the Big Bang Theory. Matt, it's a smart That's, way to help a show, yeah. you know, get artificial numbers at the beginning, but they don't really keep it until the yeah. very end. 
where people think the last five minutes, they know something's going to happen. They've already been educated to that. So they tune in. So they do 20 minutes. They go to a draw and they do like five more minutes of pull aparts after them. Right. Which is like, oh, whatever, you know. <laughs> so then they go to AW, they go to Cassie back. Let me just say real quick this was a good match. They, uh, they love opening up with Mox with the wild thing for a while. If you remember, it was always Orange Cassidy. And before that, it was always a crazy four man or five man tag team match. Um, uh, and I like this because right as FTR was about to do their finish, you know, the bell rang, you know, right. and then, and the fans were into it. They were into that it. That was well timed because they set him up for the finish, like right at the moment the bell rang. So right. Now, I was not a bit, I was not a fan of Mox and Wheeler headbutting each other. Right. And bleeding. I don't know what these guys are doing there. So they go to, so this is the angle that Orange Cassie's doing right now. He's interviewed by Ray Paquette while, while the doctor stood by. Paquette ran through Cassie's hectic schedule. And she actually, they actually brought this up that you went and defended your title at Rev, Revolution Pro Wrestling. Now, like, like, let's go back to like, like two, if you haven't watched this, you didn't watch the show two weeks ago, then you went on a date on Valentine's Day two weeks. And, and you saw the first match, and now you're hearing him talk about what is, you wonder, what is Revolution Pro? They never explain what it is or anything. They just, you know, you, you, you defended your title at Revolution. I mean, like, think about that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, so the gimmick is here that the doctors that they asked him about defending his title because you're hurt and you've been having this hectic schedule. And the doctor said that Cassidy meets minimal medical clearance. And Cassidy said there was cleared, therefore he was wrestled. The doctor was concerned, but he told Paquette that Cassidy met the clearance mark, so he didn't know what to do. Right. Let me Which tell you like, what this was like this I'm like <laughs> the doctor should have been saying I'm advising him not to wrestle. He could use another right. week. Like, you yeah. very clear. Not, not what <laughs> he's going to do, what he wants to do, right. And so, <laughs> and the other thing that yeah. stuck out to me was uh, the doctor, bro, and you would have never seen this in WCW or WWE back in the day. The doctor was twice the size of Orange Cassidy right. and just about anybody else. <laughs> and he's actually a doctor back there because he's right? actually worked on me. Um, but uh, that's so weird, you know, when the doctor's twice your size. Right. But that is, the, the, bro, this is like what we talk about with storytelling, right? Right. You would want the doctor kind of maybe going into detail why he shouldn't work here. Right. But all they're saying, like, right. the those are the things that they're missing out on and going, look, I right. told them, I told them what the problem is. I said, this could happen, this could happen. But he's decided under his own, you know, under, he's been warned. I've already told, you know, the, right. the Tony Khan, and he wants to do it and he's taking it and, you know, right. I Tell advise them not to. Yeah. Make the people feel more invested in the story right. while they're just saying, well, he meets the minimal requirements. Right. And he and decides he's going to go in the ring anyway. <laughs> what can like, you do? Right, right, yeah. Um, so they go out. So Hardwood and Wheeler were interviewed in the back, and they continued to pull apart. Mox and Cassie only showed up. Um, other, so he could, so Hardwood called for then the Wrestle Revolution. So this angle is they got each other's face. They fought. They you know, Moxley beat Hardwood. He wouldn't release a choke. So he came back in a tag match. They went to a draw and you know, pull apart. And now we're going to wrestle Revolution. All right. Um, what match are you talking about? I was talking about the, the backstage pull apart after Hard. They interviewed Hardwood and uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. I know. I'm just, I was about. just recapping the the, the okay, 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 okay. I remember. Yeah, because yeah. they're wrestling at Revolution. I guess because for the star ratings or something. I don't know. Um. So they do uh, Cassidy against Bennett, and take a while. I guess he goes over here. Uh, Cassidy. Yeah. And yeah, Tavern Matt comes he, out. He charges Tavern to start off the match hot. Then Roderick Strong comes out. So they're using bells and whistles to make this match. Man, the match actually wasn't bad at all. No. Um, so uh, Jake Hager comes out to save Which was Cassidy. very weird to me. A, why is he coming out? What does he have to do with this? And is he a baby face? Before this segment was over, right, they had a graphic in the lower part of the screen Jake Hager versus Roderick Strong at, on, on Rampage. I did not. <laughs> I, brother, literally, they cleared. Ayer clears him from the ring. Him and Cassie are in the ring, like celebrating, yeah, whatever. And they they showed the graphic that like 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 they made a match, literally, like like that. That was the angle. <laughs> uh, um, and the funniest thing about it is that, that that Joe try to find that that thing on the show because this is so funny because Excalibur said. Tony Khan just informed him that Hager would face Roderick Strong on yeah. the Yes. And they had the graphic up. 
<laughs> like literally, like you know, like there was a button ready to go. Like you know, like, right. Uh, um, like that's another thing. Like why would you just not wait like a segment later than and then 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 they go to the announce this and announce the match? Right to after Hager really, already you know, came this, in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, those are um, the things where people say, "Oh, they're hating everything." No, we're we're actually telling you how you can make this better. Okay, so Paquette spoke with Angela Parker about his upcoming date. No, so finally we're on Dynamite. We're, so I guess on these other shows that I don't watch, that Angela Parker and Ruby Soho have been courting each other for like well it's over been going a month. on for months, bro. Months. Yeah. So now we're finally seeing it on this show. And as they didn't recap it, they're talking about a, their date. He said he was excited and nervous and he stopped talking when Soho arrived. Paquette wished him luck and Solo, Soho told Paquette she would tell her all about it on Saturday. Then a white SUV showed up and Soho wanted to resume for them. Then Parker said they had a lift waiting instead of a limo. <laughs> So Ric Flair exits the bag, and then Ric Flair comes out. And uh, he, Flair comes out of the, the, the SUV and said he's upset he hasn't been a bigger part of things. And he's not upset with Sting. He doesn't want to be more involved. Flair said he's going to explore some options. And Flair walked away, then knocked on a locker room door that was opened by the Young Bucks. And they invited Flair to talk to them. Yeah. And let me uh, tell you, because uh, you know, and we won't get into details, but you know Rick can be very sensitive if you talk about him. Bro, he looked rough when he was coming out of that. A limo, and he has been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right. Are you listening? Or are you yeah. looking at something else? Yeah. How, did he look rough to you or no? Or you didn't notice? Uh, I mean, I, I've seen him on on uh, like Twitter like recently. He looks the same. He's just looked like the past couple couple months. So I don't. He doesn't look rough to you. Well, I mean, it doesn't look you know, like the old the Rick Flair that we know. Well, no, you know what I'm saying. But but, 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 I, younger, I, I, but he just he didn't look any rough. He didn't look any rougher than he did months ago. Dude, my, he he kind of did to me. Yeah, not me. But I'm saying he doesn't, he doesn't look great. I'm not yeah. saying he looks fine. But I'm Which saying, doesn't mean yeah. you don't like you, Rick. Right. Because I'm sure that if somebody looked rough and you were with your boys like Arn Anderson or whoever, and you'd be like, wow, that guy looks rough. You know? Right. Yeah. Doesn't mean you hate somebody. You're just commenting. So this is a long segment coming up here. Uh, Dana Garcia is in the ring. Um, and he said he would challenge Kristen Cage for his TNT title at AW Revolution, even though last week he didn't win. Week he wrestled a match. He got, did the match get thrown out because Christian inter- interfered last week or something? Like Garcia didn't win, so he gets like, yeah. he's got a title show for some reason. Garcia said people told him he's going to be great. He said he started to lose confidence a couple months ago. He said he needed he knew that three seconds is all he needed. He said the three seconds at the end of the Continental Classic changed his life. And Garcia said that whenever he got down, the fans picked him up. He said when he danced, they danced with him. He thanked the fans for restoring that feeling. Garcia said, no one knows how his match with Adam Cole would have ended had it gone longer, but he's confident he would have tapped him out. Then Garcia turned his focus to Christian, but he's quickly interrupted by, by this music. And Christian came out with all his crew, and Kate, Kate spoke and said that Copeland will never get another shot at this TNT title. Kate said Garcia has been on a hell of a run, but he didn't think they should have a match of revolution. But the funniest thing, Garcia has not been on a hell of a run. That's the funniest thing about him. Kate said, it's not that Garcia is a word that he says he's not ready. And Kate said, Garcia wants to please the fans, where he wants to leave the arena night as the most dominant TNT champion of all time. Cage said Garcia had a dark childhood that brought up his mother Jackie and listen where she lives. Cage knowing that she was married to David Garcia. I understand that David Garcia is your father and your father is dead, Cage said. Cage said it would be a fairy tale ending for Garcia to win the title in memory of his father, but Cage said Garcia's father was a who lost his life to the bottle. Cage said he didn't want to hurt Garcia, wants to help him. Cage said he doesn't want to be Garcia's opponent of revolution, wants to be his father. Cage said Gage, Garcia said Cage wouldn't like what happens if he opens his mouth about his mother ever again. And Cage, Garcia told Cage that since he knows so much about his late father, he should come to the ring so he could put him in the ground right next to him. Cage nodded, then Nick headed to the ring, and Garcia took down Nick and put him in the dragon table. And Cage said, full kill switch to the ring. The Matt Bernard ran out and hit everybody with chair shots and then joined Garcia inside the ring. What did you think about this? To make you excited about a Garcia Cage title match? No. Um, here's the thing, though. I don't understand why Lucha Sars is just standing there doing nothing. He should be part of this storyline. Remember when he was punking him out, Christian, and pushing him, yeah. and, and the people getting into him, hey, punch him back, and, you know, and, I mean, he's just standing out there like the other two, you know. Um, you know, good promo for Daniel Garcia, but um, I don't think anybody cares about his dad because they don't know him. Why would they be invested in that? That's always been my problem with bringing in family members into a storyline. We don't know them. We've never met them. We're not invested in them. So why would we care? I just think it's a cheap ploy to try to get sympathy and it usually doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so next was, uh, 
Okay, next we did the women's stuff, and Tony Storm wrestled some. Who was this chick's name? Cindy Winnell. Who? Cindy Winnell. Sydney Winnell. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen her before. Yeah, she looked green. She got beat quick. Um, then she she was walking the back, and Deanna Parasa was walk walking to the ring. Um, <sighs> they had a little stare down. Then Parasa wrestled Madison Rain, and the match was only seven minutes and twenty seconds. But Rain got blown up after like three minutes, and it deteriorated. There was a spot near the end where just they like, looked like they were doing it in slow motion, and Madison Rain got dropped on her head. This was not a good segment. It was not good for Deanna Parazzo to be like in a match like this where she's the number one contender. But after the match, Rain was rolled out of the ring and Tony Storm ran out with a shoe in her hand. It was followed by Mariah May. Storm tried to hit Parazzo with the shoe, but Parazzo ducked it and hit her with a pump kick. And Parazzo went after May and dropped off the apron. And Storm cut Parazzo in the ankle lock. Once she released the hold, Storm and Parazzo sat on opposite sides of the ring. They used a split screen effect with black and white. And Storm smeared, smeared lipstick all over her face. Now, this this has been going on for a little while now. I don't know how long. Is, this, is, this is funny, too. They showed the thing, like the move of the night, and they showed yeah. the thing where she dropped her on her head. Yeah. <laughs> I could not believe that. So you saw this and decided to replay it again. So what did you think of this? Um, yeah, I didn't think it was good, and at the end she put her in the, I don't know what name she gave it, but uh, it's the old Pat Perry Saturn Cirque. Cir- what was it called? Rings of Saturn. Yeah. So they do a promo with Darby and Sting. Um, this match has not been built up that well, even though they sold the place out, but Sting cut a great promo here. We talk about his, uh, he said no one had messed with his family before, and Sting said his father passed away recently. He said his father was a hero to him. And Sting said his father taught him right. He said it made him think about his own mortality. He said sometimes he still feels invincible, but time catches up to everyone. Sting says he knows he's not invincible, that he's bringing everything he has left him to revolution. Sting told the Bucks they have the fight of their life on their hands. Good, really good promo. What do you think about this? Yeah, really good promo. And I like Sting. You know, he's always, yeah. when he's always cool guy. When we travel together uh, on the road, always cool guy. And it was kind of funny because one time, I think I told this story, but it, it's worth telling again. So um, we were in Nebraska and he got on the mic and he goes, Yeah, yeah, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. And I was like, what a worker, bro. <laughs> you know, nice way to get over with the fans. And he was like, no, I'm actually from here. And I'm like, give me a break. And then later on that day, we were in the hotel lobby and he was taking pictures. And he goes, let me introduce you to my family. And I go, oh, so you either he was born there, he grew up there. I'm not sure. Uh, Wardlow comes up there with a tank top on, black black pants, look, look pretty good. Got a really good passion for him, boys. I mean, he should get more mic time, definitely, because he was uh, talking about how he went through Punk, went through MJF, went through Joe, and made a very good, compelling case for himself why he should be the champion. But this should have been done, like, weeks and months ago. It's like, all of a sudden, now he's like, like this is what he has to say. He said, this is what he should have had to say, like, a while back when they had they were pairing off where MJF had all these guys he was supposed to be fighting against. But, uh, but, but he said... Wardlow said that anyone who wants to get his way should know that it's no longer wrestling. This is war. Um, he's supposed to be a heel, but this was a good babyface promo, kind of, I thought. What did you think of this? Yeah, it was a babyface promo, and I think he's lost a lot of steam. And, yeah, good promo. Now do something about it. Right. He gained a lot of his steam back with the promo. Now he has to do something interesting next right. week instead of just another squash match, which right. I would anticipate is probably what they're going to do with him. So. Right, which has become very dumb and boring. <laughs> um. So they showed an Osprey video. He's going to be on Dynamite next week. So this didn't make it, you know, Don Callis' group is kind of like stuck in the mud right now. Paquette spoke with Don Callis, Takesh, and Powerhouse Hobbs, and Callis spoke about Takesh facing Osprey and said they would both be part of the Callis family. And Callis said even Tony Khan was there to watch Osprey over the weekend. He said everyone thought Osprey would fly back to the United States with Khan, but the Callis family will pick him up in the UK and bring him back for the match. And Callis spoke about Hobbs briefly, and they called Sammy Guevara a little. That was actually plenty of lining. Callis said they'd escort a set on me, keeping an eye on Guevara. I don't, you know, I, I have no idea why they're having Osprey wrestle to catch of all the people they have in this company, why, why they're doing an angle where they're wrestling each other in this. You know, I don't know. What are you thinking of this? Yeah, very logical. We said that last week. Yeah, very logical. And um, I don't get it. Um, I forgot to mention, I la- I popped in Storm's match when they said she was from stage. Uh, I don't know, seven or something from <laughs> Warner Brothers Studios. Oh, sure. oh, right. um, but um, uh, yeah, th- that makes no sense. Right. 
Yeah, I don't. I, I'm and, looking at and, and we were talking mm-hmm. about um, Wardlow. Not only did Joe totally destroy his credibility when he Hobbs did too. Yeah. So uh, they did the six man, and I mean, nothing really happened to this other than your typical six man. Um, because they, they did a promo earlier where uh, where Paige Hook and Van Dam were doing a promo about the match, and Paige was kind of acting heelish and saying they had to follow the plan and take out Swerve, right? Yeah. They, they were getting a little, you know, they were selling a little bit. But basically, they just did this match with 21 something minutes, and Joe just won. He choked out Rob Van Dam, and that, that was it. Right. And here's the thing I, 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 like, a, a, a lot of questions here. First of all, why is Paige teaming up with Rob Van Dam and the other guy if he's a if he's a if he's a heel, right? <laughs> Why is Swerve tagging up with Samoa if they're enemies? They said they're having a truce for a night. Okay, I it's just it. like bro. There's no like there was no heat in this or anything. It was just a match. When you know, let me give you Powell's POV. I didn't really understand this match when it was first advertised. I guess they're acting like Paige is still a babyface who's in the process of turning heel. Exactly. While Swerve is still a heel who is in the process of turning babyface. Exactly. I'm not sure why they don't just officially pull the trigger on both of those moves. <laughs> like, anyway, which is true, you would have a more interesting dynamic for the match, and like you know, right. because everybody knows where they're going. Like you, you're, you're watching this. Okay, Paige is obviously turning heel, and Swerve is. There's no reason to drag this out. Just like right. just pull the trigger, right? <laughs> um, the match is action packed, and Wide Proud enjoyed it. The match didn't really get me more excited about the AW World Championship match or Revolution, but I was already looking forward to it. So no harm done. Um. You know what, they, bro? They, they, you got a very easy way of uh, of getting getting the turn to doing the straight turn here. Okay, you just have basically Paige annihilate Nana for no reason. Like if Nana's just dancing at ringside and everything, you know, Paige just come clobber him, put him through a table, and if Swerve gets they they like go. You know what I'm It's like there's a really simple out to just get good good heel heat here because the Nana dance is over. You know, if our page, the page should just like, like beat Nana and Swerve sticks up for him, you know, like, because because the fans like the guy, you know, <laughs> so that, that'd be a good baby face spot for Swerve and a good heel spot for Paige. What do you think about that? I would like to see you and Nana come out doing the let me whip or watch me nay nay or watch me whip or watch me shake. <laughs> um, yeah, bro. I, I don't understand why they would even trust him, why they would be on the same team as him. You're telling me Samoa John, the other guy had a truce, um, you know. I think the show started off good with that match. And then there were a couple of things with the girl stuff was not good. The, the botch obviously didn't help. The Ric Flair thing with the young bucks was a little weird. Um, the orange Cassidy with the doctor thing that we mentioned about. Yeah. You know, it's almost like if somebody went out and said, yeah, Tua says, uh, even though I just told him as a concussion, he says he's going to play anyways. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. The minimal, so the minimal standard. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's like why are you guys letting why are you gotta let a guy go wrestle a match against a you know when he's got minimum the minimal standards of, I don't know I don't think so. that's why they, they they come up with so well there are a lot of ideas for the show and not a lot of them are very good to be honest with you so that's what I come out of uh, so that's not our AEW reviews Enjoy actually those two things I liked sure, I love the Sting promo excellent and I loved our Wardlow yes. promo yeah right. so to, the rest of the stuff is just kind of like and I even like the Daniel Garcia promo too did you really yeah yeah, he's winning me over uh last couple oh. months. Yeah, I like him. Well, he's got a, he's got a win. Old, uh, not bad. Sure. If he had a, like a brighter color on, I could get a... Never mind. 